Hi, everybody. Dennis Prager here. I'm in Washington, D.C., and I'll tell you why later because it's a, it's a big deal and an important deal. I have on the line Leon DeVinter, and uh, Mr. DeVinter has been on this show a number of times. He is one of the leading, if not the leading, novelist in uh, Holland, and uh, he is one of its leading columnists as well, and happily speaks fluent English. And uh, he, uh, his, uh, his nation lost 193 people on the jet shot down by Russian-supplied missiles to Russian-supplied soldiers in a Russian-dominated area of Ukraine. Leon DeVinter, where are you right now? Hi, Dennis. I am in Israel at the moment. Oh, so you've decided to... Yeah. In a one town called Sigon Yaakov, south of Haifa, uh, is uh, amazingly beautiful here. Well, you've uh, chosen an interesting time to visit Israel. We'll talk about that and Europe later. Let's talk about this, though. Uh, I, I'm sure you have been in touch with uh, Dutch colleagues and reading Dutch papers and so on. Yeah. Uh, I, I would have to imagine that the people of Holland are alternately crying and furious. Um, yeah, of course, there's, a, there's an immense sadness, uh, also, of course, because of the, the, the number, uh, so many people, and it's a relatively small nation of uh, 16 million people, so 193 deaths, is, uh, it's, 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 it's a huge number, and there's, of course, a lot of sadness and, uh, and fury, uh, but, uh, but what to do, of course, you're, you're, you're totally powerless. Um, another thing, of course, in this, uh, which which is quite a shock for this for this very prosperous and uh, and safe nation, is suddenly you you are connected to world politics. Uh, apparently, the world isn't as safe as as we always pretend it to be. There on the on the on the edge of the of the European continent, uh, surrounded by civilized nations. Uh, there seems to be a different reality out there, and uh, and that's also quite a shock that you have to face evil suddenly. Uh, so you can imagine um, what uh, what the mood is in in Holland at the moment. That's a uh, that's a big deal that they have uh, they have been rudely awakened to the fact that they're not safe. I hadn't I hadn't actually thought about it in those terms. That that's. Uh, we Americans know that. Obviously, Israelis live that. But I think uh, for people in Europe, or especially in a place like Holland or a place like uh, Norway or uh, in you know, many of the other countries, uh, there was a sense of safety. Yes, of course, things happen. Uh, but uh, after a couple of generations, used to uh, to a uh, to a, a welfare state. Um, which is creating uh, um, a lot of levels of uh, of things that uh, that add to f- feeling safe and there's there are no threats and there's low crime um, for whatever problem there is a solution delivered by the state uh, up to a certain limit of course um, but this is this is a different ball game uh, and that means that uh, that we're really uh, totally despairing. What to do? How to react? Can you react? No, you can't react. Um, today there was a uh, a meeting in Dutch Parliament, and one of the the members of Parliament said, "Listen, we have these great commandos, uh, our Dutch Marines, uh, very well trained, uh, belong to the top in the world. Um, uh, uh, shouldn't we send them? But but what can they do? And uh, what are you uh, provoking?" Uh, we have to face this. Um, the, the bodies were well. Ho- Holland has Hall- Holland has influence uh, in, in you know in a moral direction. You know, it's, it's a well-regarded country in Europe. I, I mean, for example, uh, I, I I don't understand why they are not uh, just uh, why, why, for example, they didn't expel or, or, or at least uh, just send out for a period of time the Russian ambassador to Holland. 
It doesn't seem to me. I don't the believe, Russians and I will talk to them as their as their main energy uh, harbor in Europe. Oh, uh, the Russian gas and, and oil. Um, yes, are, are being so, so, uh, pumped to Rotterdam and loaded onto ships, and you name it. Um, so there are so also, in other uh, words, so so commercial ru- values uh, uh, interest. Ex- Yes, and the Russian banks are clearing houses. I mean, excuse me, the Dutch banks are clearing houses for a lot Absolutely. of Russian billionaires. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So, so, you, so all right. So, so that. <laughs> no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we have to face our own hypocrisy. Exactly. You know, here's <laughs> this is this is this is of course you can you can look away and turn your back to all kinds of issues. At a certain moment, it will catch you. And this is the moment, and it is very unpleasant, and it's shocking to all of us. Um, and apparently the world isn't that safe as we thought. And there are limits to dealing with tyrants and, um, and dictatorships. At a certain moment, you have to draw a line. And you know what? Um, I think this line, at this very moment at least, I, it, it may change. There's fury, but I think... Even under the present circumstances, um, I'm, I'm sure there will not be any measures. And in the end, uh, commerce will be regarded as more important than values, uh, than the lives of hundreds of people. Uh, it, this has been like this for hundreds of years in the Netherlands, um, um, the, and of course, there has been conflicts now and then. Now and then, um, but uh, the main interest for for the Dutch uh, was always: uh, can we make a deal? Can we profit from it? Uh, are there issues like, for instance, um, the corruption in the, uh, for instance, in Saudi Arabia, for for dealing with? Uh, maybe that's in, in in America. It's the same. Um, if you have to bribe people. The amount of the bribe is tax deductible for the Dutch IRS. You can report it, and it's accepted as a regular cost for doing business in certain nation, in certain states. That's fascinating. That is just. Fascinating. Isn't that amazing? That is that that is <laughs> is, is is the case. So that's. That's part of, uh, of, of, of the soul of this nation. And uh, is this going to change? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, although exactly. at the moment, uh, you'd better not discuss these items. Um, there has been... Uh, the king has been visiting uh, relatives of the people who died today. Uh, our prime minister is, 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 is trying to catch the mood of the nation. He sounds tough. Uh, but there are billions of dollars at stake. Uh, Holland is a very important uh, partner for the for the for the Russians. Uh, not that long ago, again, uh, there, there was our our prime minister uh, uh, visited Putin. Um, it's uh, it's the grown-up world we have to face. Suddenly, uh, this is uh, not anymore the 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 the, play, the, the kindergarten of the of the welfare state. Uh, this is uh, this is now for real. See, until uh, until the Obama administration, the the United States was exceptional in that it did have a sense that values trumped commerce. In in Europe, the commerce trumped conscience, but we were prepared to do deals that hurt our country, or to to, to take measures that would hurt our country. Uh, so. I am not surprised. I predicted exactly what you have said last hour. I predicted Europe will ultimately do nothing, even as the bodies are removed and desecrated. Ultimately, uh, commerce will triumph. Yes, yes. Sadly enough, uh, I, I agree with you, Dennis. I think it's uh, this is the case. Uh, we've seen awful things. Uh, what happened to? Uh, to the remains of uh, of the people on uh, on that flight, um, and and of course we are angry, uh, but uh, we stay at the silent lines. We look at it. Uh, they're now in uh, on a train. Uh, we don't know where the train is heading to. There are now Dutch uh, teams there, um, but uh, what the, the, 
it, it, it is a really dark page in, uh, in Dutch history. Uh, and in the, in the end, uh, uh, the people responsible for this, um, I think they will walk. Uh. Yep, exactly. Back in a moment, I'm on with Leon de Winter, leading Dutch novelist and columnist. Hi, everybody. Dennis Prager here. A a man I greatly respect. He is, what shall I say, and this is a big compliment, he is morally serious. Leon de Winter, or as we would incorrectly say, de Winter, is a major Dutch novelist and columnist. And he has been on the show a number of times. Whenever I want a European take on things, I, I look to Leon. And uh, now Holland is in the news for the tragedy of, uh, as somebody noted in some column, Holland lost in this airplane a greater percentage of its population than America did on 9-11. So look at it as sort of Holland's 9-11 plus, and you get an idea of what uh, it it means to the people there. But there won't be, uh, in in his opinion and in mine, as I said last hour, Europe lost its soul after World War I. My column this week coming out tomorrow is, Does Russia Have a Conscience? Does Europe? That's the title. And that's, uh, unfortunately, he verifies my my suspicions. See, socialism... I, I'll talk about this after I have. I, I don't want to. I don't want to take the time from Leon de Winter. Uh, have you been following uh, Europe's or at least the Dutch uh, reporting on uh, the uh, the war in Gaza? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, the reporting in the United States has been god awful. Uh, it's just about. Uh, sad Gazans and tragic deaths of Gazan children, and it's been entirely lopsided in that way. I presume Europe is no different. <laughs> yeah, you expect it differently. That, yes, no, it's, of course it's the same. It, I think it's worse. It's worse than, uh, mm-hmm. even than uh, the reporting in America. And um, that's, uh, of course, uh, we can expect that. Um, and and as as far as you can say smart in relation to the, the the leaders of Hamas, well maybe this is smart. Of course, this is this is a war they cannot win uh, militarily. Uh, but they can. There's only one war, and they are aware, are aware of that. That they, they, they really can win, and that's the publicity war. That's the only war they can win. There's no way uh, that they're uh, that they could defeat Israel's army, invade it, or whatever. And that was never the purpose. The purpose was to challenge Israel, to make it unbearable, to bring Israel uh, so far that it would hit back. And it's, on, I mean, in our ears, it sounds monstrous. It's, it's, it's devilish. Uh, uh, but that was uh, the purpose, and uh, and that meant uh, Israel had to come back and uh, and unfortunately had to go into Gaza at a certain moment, and that means uh, civilian death. And that was the purpose for for Hamas. I mean, right, right. It, it's hardly major. a leadership, and let's call this a city state because it it has fixed borders and it has a real government. Uh, and although it, it has not been recognized by other nations, it it wants to perform as a state. Imagine the government of a of, of a nation not wanting to protect its its population. No, the other way around on purpose. It puts its own population a danger, and that's mm-hmm. what it wants. That's because it needs those images. Um, yeah, for us, it's I mean, people looking at this from a Christian Jewish point of view, it's 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 totally unbelievable. But it's the fa- it's it's a fact. Um, and those images, of course, that's what uh, the progressive media and both, and that's very interesting because now you see a crazy alliance of, of all kinds of media together with extreme leftists and extreme right. Uh, this alliance, 
which is very loud, very vocal, very aggressive, also in the streets in Europe, in demonstrations, but also in the newspapers and on TV and radio. Um, yeah, we have to get through this. Uh, we have to survive uh, this challenge, but I don't see that uh, that Israel has any other uh, choice. This is what we have to go through. This, sir, this this imbalanced reporting, are there, at least in America, you have talk radio and you have so many uh, major websites, and except for the Gaza war, you have Fox News. Uh, what, what do you have in Europe? Anything? You have lonely voices, like my voice, here and there in the... In, in, in in, the, in in various countries, you have people like me with with, with access to media writing uh, the paper. I'm new. I'm writing for the the Telegraaf in Holland, the, the the number one newspaper. Is is relatively careful. Is uh, is, is 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 not uh, going uh, crazy about uh, about uh, Israel's uh, violence. Um, but uh, we don't have a platform. We don't have talk radio. Uh, and uh, each one of these countries, we are there. Lonely voices. Melanie Phillips, for instance, in the UK. Henrik Broder in uh, in Germany. And I'm sure in France there will be uh, also people. And uh, without any 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 protecting context, uh, we are facing everything. But we, we are doing it, and uh, and as long as we have access to the media, we can create these alternatives, and and hopefully uh, can ex- explain the situation like it really is. In the back of all of this, of course, it's one thing which I, for a couple of years, call the A word, anti-Semitism. This has, of course, nothing to do anymore with reasonable criticism of the state of Israel, after thousands and thousands of rockets. And now you hear the, 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 the critique that Israel is defending its own citizens too good, Dennis, too good. Mm-hmm. That, that mm-hmm. You can be criticized for that, that you're mm-hmm. protecting your own citizens. Um, it's, um, it's the old A word, and... Um, and that's what's playing up uh, all over Europe. Uh, it's not a pleasant sight. Uh, uh, France is really, uh, the French Jews are really under pressure. Um, in Holland, there are hardly any Jews left. Uh, there are open anti-Semitic demonstrations in the cities of Germany. Can you imagine 2014? People shouting death to the Jews in German streets, not being arrested. It's a crazy situation. Um, yep. All right, we're going to leave it at that, Leon. I, uh, you're uh, you're you're endlessly interesting in the deepest sense. Anyway, have a, have a uh, as good a vacation or whatever you're doing in Israel as you it's can. A Thank you, you for your time. A vacation in this great great country, Israel. The great lesson what I was saying in hour one and what you just heard from Leon DeVinter here on hour two of my show, Hi, I'm Dennis Prager, is that socialist Europe puts money before values in capitalist America, Judeo-Christian capitalist America has put values before profits. It's, uh, it, it's not ironic But it seems that way, given the propaganda that, hey, they're so moral because they have this welfare state. Even with the slaughter of 193 Dutch, a greater percentage of its population than we lost on 9-11, my prediction is Holland will do nothing, let alone the rest of Europe. It's already done nothing, and they, it's, the, the bodies have been desecrated, and Europe has done nothing. John Kerry announces it's the last warning to Vladimir Putin. 
it's a, it's a last warning to do what? I, I folks, it's a it's a bad world, and there are terrific individuals in it, but it's a bad world. Nothing new. The what's new is the hypocrisy. What's new is the lack of moral clarity. Lack of moral people is not new. But there is a there is a villain, as I point out there regularly. There is a villain right now. It's really the juxtaposition is just fascinating. There really is a villain. And it isn't Putin, it isn't Russia, it's Israel. Israel's fighting to, to against people who have declared that they wish to annihilate them, and Israel turns out to be the villain. But I spoke about the media in hour number one. I will not repeat that right now. Bonnie in Knoxville, Tennessee. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Dennis. I hope you can help me because I just do not understand something. And you being as intelligent as you are, maybe you can explain it to me. I don't understand these people that are on the side of the Palestinians. I have a friend who is a good Christian woman, um, a pretty pretty intelligent, and she just posted on her Facebook page an alienation with an organization that was against the um, occupation, the Israeli occupation, and posted a picture of a little Palestinian boy that had been killed by shrapnel. I, I, I don't get this. I don't, I don't get what these people, are they not paying attention? Or is there some financial situation that would cause them to be on the side of the Palestinians? Do they not realize that is the Israels are uh, the Israelis are just there trying to maintain their little piece of property? I don't know. Maybe you can explain to me why a good friend of mine, well, a friend of mine, would be on that side. Well, there are a few things you should ask her. For example. Given that, uh, I'll get the number, but you can obviously look it up easily, uh, but I don't have it offhand. Uh, Given that, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000 Syrians have just been slaughtered, uh, how come she didn't post any of their pictures up? Well, I I don't know. I don't know that. No, 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 I know you don't. I'm saying I think you should ask her why of, of... of all the staggering numbers of people slaughtered by Islamists in, in, the, in the last couple of years, the, the Boko Haram in Nigeria and uh, in Mali and uh, the, uh, the, you know, the uh, ISIS in Iraq and the Al-Qaeda in Syria and so on, why did she choose of all the victims of the only Muslim victims, tiny little number of the Jewish state. But she's not calling them victims. She's calling them the aggressors. And that's what I'm not getting. I don't get these people that think it's Israel that's the aggressor. I- yeah. Well, that's that's what I, I agree with you. Look, the, the moral inversion is mind-boggling. Back in a moment. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Dennis Prager. I'm in Washington, D.C. I didn't to tell you why. I'm speaking at the annual convention of Christians United for Israel. And uh, the, uh, the timing couldn't have been, uh, unfortunately, uh, more perfectly planned. A Christian for Israel should be redundant, but unfortunately it is not. It's quite... Uh, it's quite an upside-down world. What are there, 22? What is the number of uh, Arab states? One Jewish state? 50-something Muslim states? One Jewish state? And the world has a problem with the existence of this Jewish state that is the size of New Jersey. Jews in Europe were told to get out of Europe. 
get your own place. They get their own place. Then they're told you don't shouldn't have your own place. And uh, the uh, but the Europeans the, the the moral universe of Europe is this will be as clear. I tell you the juxtaposition of these two events is mind blowing. The war in Gaza and the shooting down of the civilian airliner. You couldn't see a more obvious way in which the European character has been deformed into nothingness, into mush. Even when their own people are shot down, they do nothing. The bodies are desecrated, and Europe does nothing. Europe lost its belief in itself after World War I, has never recovered it. The U.S., because of the left, has begun to lose belief in itself. You have the ultimate expression of that in Barack Obama, for whom the United States should not be and is not an exceptional country. And uh, when you become like other countries, you deteriorate. Uh, La Puente, California, and Annette. Hello, Annette. Dennis Prager. Hi, Dennis. Dennis, I am so... uh, It's just mind-boggling to me. Uh, In the news yesterday, there were a lot of Israelis that were demonstrating against their own government, uh, saying that this was unfair and that they should stop, uh, you know... uh, this war against the Palestinians. I don't understand yeah, where, that. Well, yeah, well, I can explain it, but I was curious. Where did you see it? I, it was in all the stations, Channel 7, Channel 4, Channel 2. Now, wait, were they demonstrating in Israel or in the yes, United States? They, they were demonstrating in Israel. Yeah, okay, look, Israel has a left just like the United States has a left. There, there are people in this country who demonstrate against this country. And they're the same people, leftists. Why don't the why don't the rabbis in our country get a hold of these influential Jews like you know Spielberg and all these people that have influence and talk to them about what's happening to you know Israel. I don't think they're particularly interested. I'm not, I'm not speaking for Spielberg specifically, but I don't think they're particularly interested. What was the last pro-Israel movie you saw? I know. What was it? What, what was it? Exodus in the 1960s. Well, I, you know, the lady that called before me that her Christian friend, you know, a Christian should know that uh, the Jews are God's chosen people. And that we as Christians uh, love and pray for the Jewish state daily. Look, I, I I live with such Christians. Believe me, I know. I'm I'm here in Washington to let to give uh, one of the keynote addresses to the Christians to unify uh, Christians United for Israel Kufi, which you should all know about. But there is another reason for Christians to support Israel, because they know the difference between good and bad. That's why. I don't understand why atheists don't support Israel. It shouldn't take theology. Maybe it does, but it shouldn't have to. Tell me another case in the history of the world where the world thought that the police state was right and the free state was the aggressor. Tell me one such example in the history of the world. Well, maybe Vietnam. The free America was the villain, and the police state of Ho Chi Minh was the victim. But that's left-wing thinking. And for the leftist, whether it's Israeli or American, leftism is the, uh, is the, is the prism through which life is understood. Christian sees life through Christianity, a religious Jew through Judaism, a committed leftist through leftism. Yes, indeed. 
Anaheim, California, and Paul. Hello, Paul. Dennis Prager. Hello, Dennis. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Good. Hey, Dennis, I, I had a funny thing happen. I was telling your screener. Um, my mom and I were actually up in the mountains on a trip, and unfortunately she slipped and fell and hit her head. I had to take her to the hospital to get some stitches. And she's okay. But the doctor, who was a very nice guy, he started the conversation about Israel and what's going on over there. And my mom and I have a very strong opinion about it, that Israel is under attack. And he did not want to hear it. He said, well, you know, the Palestinians, and, and, he, and he started on a lot of the stuff that's nonsense. And I, I listen to your show, and I think about what you say, and I just, in my head, I thought, there's no re- he, must, there, he must have some problem with Jewish people. So I told him, I said, well, do you believe that Israel has a right to exist? And I felt kind of funny in the hospital. The nurses are there. I, people were raising their eyebrows. And he says, well, that's a whole other conversation. And my mom and I looked at each other, and, and we walked out, and I thought, there's no well, way that that smart doctor, and he must be smart. Well, hold on. I, this is big deal. Back in a moment. Hi, everybody. Dennis Prager here. Uh, Paul, are you still with me? I, I am, Dennis. So let me understand. This doctor who was treating your mother after a fall raised the issue of the Middle East, and then you posed the question of, well, you acknowledge Israel's right to exist, and then he said, well, that's a whole other discussion. Is that Did I get that correctly? Yeah, that's pretty much it, Dennis. He, 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 so but wait, he, he, he said that, that's, a, that, that's a whole other discussion? That's what he said? Yeah, well, in other words, he, he the tenor of his, of his comments were that the Palestinians were, were being victimized, and that the Israeli, just everything you said before about the way the, the media paints it, and I said, I, and I just said, well, if the Palestinians stop bombing Israel, you'd have peace. What would happen if, if Israel uh, stopped? I said, do you think that Israel, maybe you think Israel doesn't have a right to exist? And he says, well, that's a whole other discussion. Okay, do, I, you I, understand, I do you understand that means, then, that he doesn't think Israel has a right to exist? And that's exactly what my mom you, you, and I you, said when we walked out of the hospital. And, and right. here's a guy who, who pronounces himself as being a Catholic, and my mom and I are Catholics. And I, we just, I, I was, I, I was just, how can anybody think that way? I, I don't understand. I wish you had more time with him. I wish I could have been there. Because I wouldn't, as you know, I wouldn't have yelled at him or anything. I just want to say, is there any other country on earth about which you would have said that's a whole other discussion? 221 countries, I believe. Would you have said that about any of the other 220? Pakistan has a right to exist? Why? By a magnitude of many, there were more people killed in making Pakistan a Muslim country out of India. Same year as Israel. Yeah, it's really something, isn't it, folks? It's clarifying. It almost makes you believe. Actually, uh, I do believe that. Actually, that's not a. It's not just a throwaway line. the The preoccupation with the Jews' destruction is has no rational explanation. None. Something must be at play. I think there is. So to the Christians I am with uh, here in Washington at the Christians United for Israel annual meeting. Pastor Hagee is the head and founder of it. Many thousands of people will be here or are here already. I will have the uh, honor of